Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at altcoins as they begin to rise. They're coming from the death of their destructive bleed against Bitcoin. Is this the time? Have we missed the bottom? I'm going to look at a couple of signals that we saw in previous cycles using Ethereum as the proxy. So make sure you've hit the like button already, subscribe to the channel, help us on our way to 200,000 subs, bell notification icon and also you're updated with the content here. Don't miss the videos because all of it goes within an educational process. So make sure you're here watching the videos from even a month ago where we we're looking at lows on Bitcoin and where we were buying using the Bitcoin fear and greed plan. All right, let's start with the market caps now. So we're at 1.57 trillion. Bitcoin is taking us to higher highs at the moment. But as we can see today, a lot of the alts are up against Bitcoin value. So we want to make sure that the alts are above this price on Bitcoin and the percentage gain on Bitcoin. So ETH is up, which is obviously one of the major drivers on the Bitcoin dominance, of course, because it's one of the largest market caps. And we're seeing XRP up 5% today, 6% on Polkadot, 4% or 5% on Uniswap. Bitcoin Cash even is up and Solana is getting a big move today, around 13%. Rounding out the top 20, we can see Theta is up 5.5, Stellar up 5.5 and, and a couple of outside that, ICP, which has had a terrible time over the last month or so, a couple of months actually. And uh, that's pretty much what we got here on the charts. All right, let's have a look at CoinGecko because this is the one we really want to look at against Bitcoin value. So we go to the 24 hours. We've got the seven days here. As we could see yesterday, some of these were starting to get a little bit of a gain back. Uh, but today we see the cryptos are getting their gain back against their Bitcoin value. XRP is up. As I've talked about plenty of times before, it's not a crypto that I would look at investing in long term. But really hear this. It could be a fantastic trader's cryptocurrency to trade and get more Bitcoin because it does do very good moves from lows to highs regain that Bitcoin value and then die out again. So XRP is is a good trading crypto. Uh, the rest of these here, as we could just see on the dollar charts, so coin market cap for the dollars, this is for our Bitcoin values. Solana's up, a lot of good green here in the last 24 hours. So have we missed that bottom? Let's have a look at this chart here. So Bitcoin value, Satoshi, Satoshi value, and the USD value. I had a look at this yesterday. What we want to look out for is that our BTC value is on the rise overall on a macro time frame, not just our USD value moving up. So that's one major thing. Let's go to the fear and greed and then get back to our charts. So updating the fear and greed, we are at $40,070, $40,070. Bucks. Fear and greed today is sitting at 53. Yesterday we had 50 and then we have not had a purchase for about a week and a half now. So if we drop this back to our month, we can see that we were looking at purchasing at 15 or under. So that was on the 21st, which means our overall portfolio is sitting at about 17 to 18% profit at the moment. So if we throw in 40 grand there again, 40,080, you know, we're about 18%, which means we're about two grand profit from the, the purchases averaged out over the last two and a two months and a week or so. So Ethereum is the main one I want to look at today because we're using that as a proxy for the rest of the altcoin market because obviously we can't look at 10,000 different cryptocurrencies, but it gives us a good idea of what we may be seeing moving forward because like we've seen with the altcoin seasons, Ethereum does have a little bit of a run moving into those. So market cap, Ethereum is coming back a little bit against Bitcoin today. You see, we can hardly see it on here, but when we look at the market caps, it is climbing a little. Uh, trading volume's good, mining rewards almost even again. This was well and truly up there as we're getting closer to that flippening of Ethereum taking over Bitcoin's market cap. So we're not there yet, 37%, but I think in time, that's why I bet on Ethereum as one of my other long-term holds because it should gain BTC value in the long term. That's the idea on this investment anyway. The good news is coming out for Ethereum, which hopefully flows on to some of the alts, especially in, of course, the, the DeFi space, NFTs, which are pumping at the moment, the odd one here and there. Um, so basically, it is up. Total exchange volume is good. All this stuff is going on. We we'll see institutions, more interest in DeFi, etc. Okay, so the good news is out there for Ethereum to try and push this thing up. 
All we want to do here is just look at some of the headlines. I was looking at this from Michael Pizzino's channel, which is my brother. Go and follow him as well if you haven't already. Cover the news and the charts. We just want to see what people are trying to put out there, what these news organizations, the media is trying to sway us into thinking. You know, Ethereum, if it could hold this fractal, altcoins pump. Now, my one simple question that I put out on Twitter just two days ago, one simple question, was 28,000 the low for Bitcoin? Yes, up only from now. No, the sub's coming. Sub 28 is coming. Some people might be patient for that. Maybe we'll never see it. But we've got about 60%. So six out of 10 people are looking for that was it. That was the low. The show's over. It's only up from here. And others think maybe this is just a little bit of time to run up before we see lower prices. So we'll look at Bitcoin dominance here. And the main thing is we are having a little bit of a pullback. That's a healthy correction. We've seen this multiple times before and the circled areas here are specific times that I remember comments, times in the market when people were thinking that we are not going to make it uh, from that point of the Bitcoin dominance, that this was just going to keep heading down, down, down. And I do remember this specifically as well. People saying, well, I think it's wrong. I don't think we're going to make it. This time, there was a couple of days down. I don't think we're going to make it. And here we are at new highs. We've even reached new recent highs as we have a small pullback, which I'm looking at in terms of a uh, time to come back and test the resistance and make it support. So I'm looking somewhere down around 70, oh, sorry, 47 and a half to 48, where we could see a rest before we start to move again. So anywhere, you know, back to around here. But we always got to look at the, the other side of the, the coin. If we start to break down around 44%, I'd probably think that the dominance is over and that is all Bitcoin could suck back from the market. So I've always got the two ideas in mind because this is investing. You don't just have this one small short, short term view of what's going on. You need to be able to understand what's happening on both sides. So this is the point where I say, well, maybe that was it. That was all the dominance was because my longer term outlook is up in around the 50 to 53%. And so if we don't get there, I need to know, all right, well, we're not going to get there. Show's over here. Okay, so probably heading lower, which means maybe some of the, the money is going to go back into altcoins. So looking at BTC, BTC chart, and today's action pretty much saw nothing. We, we basically closed where we opened. So not much going on there. But the important part of that is when BTC tends to have a rest, it gives the altcoins a little bit of a chance to have a move because they've been suppressed for months. Well, they've been going down and down and down for months. A lot of people think they're going up because their USD value is going up. But I mean, Bitcoin's done the same thing. They've just been losing in their Bitcoin value. So a couple of times here, we've seen BTC not necessarily rest, but it just didn't have a clear decision of whether it was going up or down. And this is when we saw some more altcoin season. So they were big gains. But we may be seeing something now where Bitcoin might have a few days of arrest just to give the alts some dominance back, just, just to give them a little bit, test them out before potentially they fall or break some more resistance levels and, and then head north again. And so that's another zone here from January and February. Bitcoin was down, but it was up a long way from where it was. So that was just to give altcoins some breathing space. And we can see that on Ethereum. So these are the couple of things that I was looking at specifically in terms of time. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, these are things that I've seen from previous market cycles. And this can be applied to all cryptocurrencies, stocks, whatever has a chart. We're just measuring timeframes. So from the previous cycle for Ethereum, as we said, using Ethereum as the proxy for the altcoin market. And of course, we will always look at the Bitcoin dominance. We had 24 weeks up, 25 weeks down. We had this little zone here and there were 30% rises, 40% rises. We also had another rise just after the, the move. So we had a, nearly a 60%. There it is, 60.1%. So this was after the second altcoin season. But in between these moves of 24 weeks and eight weeks up, so this is Ethereum Bitcoin, there were long periods of a downtrend. Currently, we only see 11 weeks down and that's to this week, not even the low, which happened after approximately seven or so weeks. And what we've seen move leading up into the high in May was 88 weeks from the low, 88 weeks, nearly two years of up move for Ethereum against Bitcoin value. And 
we also saw 20 weeks from this current low, which was in December, which is when the market started to really heat up. So Ethereum started to move. And that was 20 weeks. Similar to what we've seen in the past, this had 24 weeks for its first altcoin season, and then it had eight weeks. And so if we look even closer in, we had, uh, I think this was seven or eight weeks from this low point to that high. So seven weeks up for the final move. And so again, this had eight weeks as well. Are we finished? I don't think so. I think we still have another move up, but I think we may still have some downside just based on what the history is telling us. We've seen good solid moves up for Ethereum against Bitcoin and then it rests for 25 weeks. Will it go down this amount? That total amount is about 85%. I'm not calling it for 85%, but I think we do need a little more restful time. Six months up, six months down, we go up for another couple of months, and then it rests. Right now, we've gone up for a couple of years. We've only rested for about 11 weeks. So should I see this fall, then I think that would also uh, lean across to the rest of the altcoin market based on what history is showing us here. Now, that just means that our Bitcoin values will continue to deplete on our altcoins. So we're going to look at ETH USD. Does that mean the ETH USD will also go down? Not necessarily. ETH USD might also go up, but the ETH BTC might bleed. And that would be because Bitcoin is going up against the US dollar and all the cryptocurrencies are priced against USD and, and Bitcoin, of course. So this might even go up, which looks pretty healthy at the moment. We've just started to break through previous highs. We do have more resistance coming up at around 29 uh, 2700 2900 and maybe even $3,000, which is a 50% level. So that doesn't mean that the ETH USD won't fall, uh, but it could keep going up. Okay, so that's why we continue to look at our fear and greed plan, our Bitcoin chart, uh, Bitcoin purchasing plan, so that we're buying in, waiting for the lows to come in on our Bitcoin charts and using Ethereum as the proxy for the rest of the altcoins, as we've seen many of them continue to bleed and then when we get those bottoms in like we saw in 2019 we can use some of that bitcoin which we've been dollar cost averaging into to buy up the altcoins and then watch those gains happen from some of these low areas uh, let's use one of the higher lows as a good confirmation uh, 300 percent on the bitcoin that we've already purchased which has also already gone up in dollar value as well that's a simple way to look at the market. I still don't see a bottom yet forming on the Bitcoin charts of the alts. So the altcoin BTC pair, you might see it differently. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you still think altcoins have a way to fall, further to fall against their Bitcoin value? Or do you think most alts have put in their BTC bottoms and are only going to head up from this point. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know down below in the comments. Make sure you've liked the video, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. Let's get it to 200,000. Follow us on Instagram and on Twitter, daily Q and A's and crypto news over there on Twitter. And if you want to learn more about trading and investing, the Investor Accelerator is for you. There is a link down below, special on at the moment. I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.